Hello ladies, welcome to Homemakers Radio and welcome to the mats. Today is a special day and I am going to direct it to all of those of you who are alone today. I realize that in the northern hemisphere the weather is not always predictable and we have not encouraged our friends and relatives to travel in this season because the passes, although they are open, uh, there can be a sudden snowstorm and we got caught in one one time even though the pass was open. There wasn't any way to get the roads plowed so suddenly and uh, communication was cut off and so we don't encourage people to risk their lives to come for a holiday and so I know that a lot of people in this area are alone today and I wanted to address that especially to you ladies who are alone. But uh, before I get started, I want to share my teacup with you today. It is not an antique, but it has the look of, an an of antiques, and I'm getting a lot of these because they are so durable. The antiques, not so much. They tend to get uh, thin and chippy, and they're a little bit more delicate. And this is by, it just says Fine China on the bottom. So it must have been uh, some kind of gift cup, and it looks like it came from even the 80s or 90s. And, uh, and it's got that delightful uh, red on it. So I thought you would like that. And I'm wearing uh, the only piece of red I have to wear is this plaid. So I'm wearing a, a scarf with it that I made back in the 80s to go with all those dresses that had the big collars. You remember that, the Battenberg collars. And this was in a pattern that I used. And I'm so happy with it that I have made several of them. I wish the collars would come back. They kind of... You could wear any color you wanted, and the white would be, or the kind of white you liked. If you liked an off-white, or if you liked a yellow-white, or a blue-white, you could wear that up near your face. And then you could wear any kind of a pattern, or print, or color with it. Well, today, while you get ready, I want to talk to you about a few things. And if you're alone, this is really important. If you're alone today, and today's... Christmas Day for many people. It was yesterday in Australia was Christmas Day. But today if you're alone or you feel like you are alone, then I would like to talk to you about how to take this day alone. I have some ideas for it. Now, uh, for a lot of you, first you will cry. <laughs> but then you're going to have to get up and, and uh, live again, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> for some people, they say, yeah, well, I, I guess I'm going to have to go ahead and live. And I remember a lady who said after she'd had so many tragedies and disappointments in her life and she said she had woke up, awakened one morning and her whole bed was wet, her pillows were wet, her blankets were wet, her, her pajamas were all soaked. And she said she had cried so much in the night she had just got everything wet. She didn't even know she had done it. And she said uh, she woke up thinking that God had let her live another day and she had hoped that she could just go quietly in the night because her the tragedy of her life was, was so great. And um, she said after that uh, she realized that God wasn't going to let her die. <laughs> she really wanted to. She was alone and had had many uh, unfortunate things in her life happen that left her quite alone and she said when she after she woke up she realized God was not going to let her die and she decided to sit down and make a list of all the things that she wanted to do or could do and it was as if God had said to her she said to me if it was as if God had said to me at last finally you're doing you're listening to me and so she started to get a, a list of things that she could do and uh, her she filled up her schedule full of things that she could do and a lot of it, it did involve other people but a lot of it was on her own and so today I want to talk to you ladies who are home alone and so the first thing that you have to do when you're home alone is get dressed and get ready for the day because you're not really alone and God is watching you and he's participating in your life and so one way that you show that communication as to get dressed and to absolutely do your best to get dressed and to glorify God in your appearance. And the other thing I would say next would be 
if possible, do some of your exercises. Find an exercise video and do them. Now, I like the ones where you just sit in a chair and you reach over here and you reach over here and you move your neck and you move your and uh, do those exercises because what they do is kind of loosen up your thinking and uh, so you're not, I call it stuck thinking. You feel a little bit more creative when you're finished and they are beneficial in so many other ways. They create an optimism. I think a lot of the times when people get discouraged, it has something to do with their bodies. And I remember one lady we visited, Mr. S and I, many years ago in the church and she was um, elderly like I am now. And she said that uh, she said she had to t finally tell her doctor, my problem is not mental, it's physical. If I could get you know my arms and legs working better, I would feel better and I would be more optimistic. And because her doctor kept trying to uh, give her all kinds of uh, medicines that would actually um, make her kind of blank out and stop thinking, and she wanted to she wanted to improve, so she was exercising and taking walks and so find some form of exercise and if you're all dressed up of course you don't want to be jumping around but you can do chair exercises and you can go for a walk and if you can't go outside go for a walk in your own house even the smallest of houses like the Vance has a distance that you can travel from one end of a hall to the end of the to the last wall of the last room and if you go there several times you've been on a walk and Reminds me of uh, Pride and Prejudice when they would take a turn around the room. They'd kind of link arms and walk around. And I remember that scene where Lizzie had been playing the piano and Darcy was there. And one of his sisters asked Lizzie, would you like to take a turn around the room? And that's what they did. Is the winter, is the weather was inclement. There was no point in going outside. And uh, so they would walk around the room and walk around the house. And that's another reason to keep your house delightful. It's another reason to keep your house looking like you would like it to be. And I'm not saying you go through and find all the pictures in magazines and try to copy them, but put things up in your house, put things around your house that have meaning for you. And even if it's just because you like it, just because you like to look at it. So that would be the second thing. So first thing is to go get dressed. So you might want to hang up, call me back later. And go and get dressed and absolutely do your very best. Dig into your skin care box and your hair care box and, and get uh, things get things uh, out that you haven't used in a while. And just give, no one's going to be there to criticize what you look like. So you can actually overdo it if you want to. You can go over the top. Do you remember the movie Auntie Mame where uh, there was one Christmas where she had lost her fortune and so all of her uh, servants had helped create a Christmas for her and uh, she found a, a, a little artificial, it was a bow from a present, it was a red bow from a present and she stuck it in her hair and she just looked at herself and she was so happy. If you ever get a chance to watch that movie, Auntie Mame, uh, I think it's mainly for people our age, we would understand the era that it was that it was portraying. I think a lot of people would, would find things, yes there are some things wrong with that, with that movie. But for our age, I think it's it's good. So if you could find a movie like that to watch, put that aside, and that's something you're going to be able to do today. Auntie Mame would be the one that I would recommend for you if you're alone because it has a Christmas scene in it. Other movies that have Christmas scenes in it are Emma is one of them. I uh, can't think at the moment what some of the others would be, but those two have Christmas scenes in them, which I just love. And so get dressed. Go for a walk in your house, do your chair exercises, and now as you go through a walk through your house, this is most useful, now start to pick up the clutter as you go and go and wipe things down and give it a little extra, everything an extra little polish. Put out something that you like, a bowl of fruit, or pre get your cookbook out and lay it out up to a recipe that you want to follow because you'll be doing some of this today and you'll be doing it for if you want to make a package of something for someone else, you can, or you can just do it for yourself. And the other thing is uh, put out a table setting, just a table setting for one, and uh, take yourself to tea today. So you might also want to first go and get your little recipe out and make enough for one or two and get that ready so you can take yourself to tea and make yourself your little sandwiches 
and that's going to the reason for this is that it's going to take up some of the time and that is one of the biggest problems with being alone on a day when you're alone is the time the time just kind of looms before you like an eternity and there are no voices there and voices are increasingly important especially if uh, you tend towards a forgetfulness or even dementia because the voice activates the ears which activate the brain the hearing which activate the brain was so important to hear and that's why I'm going to suggest you watch a movie today but first let's get dressed let's go for a walk let's do your chair exercises and uh, then the other thing I'd like you to do is get out your I'm sure you all have hymn books old hymn books at home get out a hymn book uh, and uh, choose a song to sing and uh, as you walk through the house of course you're going to pick up things that's your housekeeping pick up things and just refine it a little bit and make it look like a lovely day act like you're expecting uh, a guest or that you are going to be the guest and uh, this is why uh, people our age are so blessed because we play like we had a childhood where we played and we played like play like this and play like that and and uh, a lot of people to, uh, today are so practical they don't encourage that in children but we knew how to play like just like Auntie Mame you know she uh, she put that bow in her hair and she just played like she was having the most wonderful Christmas day and uh, she uh, she she was so inspiring now younger people might not appreciate that movie so I'm just telling it for you if you're elderly like me and uh, those of us uh, who are uh, that are alone for Christmas Day you know um, you don't have to be in captivity like we are today to have had that happen to you and we have to find things that make the day meaningful and make life meaningful for you this is all part of what homeschooling was alike too it was for making life uh, meaningful and uh, having a purpose no matter what no matter what the circumstances life had a, a purpose and a meaning because of your connection with God and his will for you and so we learned everything in light of the scriptures everything in light of the scriptures we took the Bible and made a curriculum out of it for character for science for other things a lot of curriculums are just uh, some kind of book uh, some kind of uh, academic book what they add God to it once in a while but we would take the Bible and use it in many different ways and we could even use it for a recipe and so we had so many things that we could do so get dressed go for your walk uh, pick up some clutter refine it and then turn some lights on if it's if you're in the northern hemisphere of course you'll need some lights and I've been using a lot of these battery operated lights like you see on that little Dollar Tree tree and it has a I also bought the lights at the Dollar Tree too so that was a two dollar tree and I just stuck it in a styrofoam uh, piece styrofoam ball inside of a container that I had and so start lighting up I have these battery operated candles that I got at Hobby Lobby and they kind of flicker and uh, that was before captivity I bought these and uh, just reach over and turn them on, on and off and uh, so I light, light that all up and I used to because of the way that we all grew up we always saved our best for company remember that so I used to save things that had batteries and uh, you know I didn't want to use up anything because I wanted to save them for best but I'm not going to do that anymore uh, I'm just going to have faith that uh, there will be more where that came from so light that all up so light your house so get dressed fix yourself up at, like it's a celebration uh, clean up the clutter do your exercises walk through the house clean up the clutter and then set a table for tea because you're going to take yourself to tea so get your recipe book out and uh, your sandwich makings out and get that all made up and get that table set with if, if you've got a charger or a placemat to make it really glamorous uh, and set your napkin out and your teacup out and then put your uh, your little device in front of it for get ready to watch Auntie Mame or Emma which have uh, Christmas scenes in it I can't think of any other movies at the moment that have a Christmas scene you know I'm always uh, I, I'm kind of a mood watcher and if I want to find a movie that has a storm in it sometimes I'd like to have a movie that has a storm in it outside of the windows <laughs> of uh, of the of inside of the movie and that they're hard to find and uh, but now Auntie Mame does have a Christmas scene in it that you will like and this is a woman who who is suffering terribly and uh, learned how to overcome it and 
So then, uh, so take yourself to tea today and watch a movie. Remember to set the table. And also I would suggest to you that something interesting, I've always wanted to do this and I may still, is to keep an art journal. So today if you were keeping an art journal, it's one of these little books that you can watercolor in and then they have lettering, you can learn to letter and write about the event. So in this book you would draw a picture of your teacup or your your morning tea or what or some little ornament or something and then write about how you feel or what it was like or what it smelled like or you know draw just paint and uh, I'd like I'm going to start that when I get organized I still have a few more things to do before I start a new hobby and uh, so you want to do all that and then every, then you get your hymn book out and sing to yourself a hymn sing to yourself some kind of seasonal hymn if you want to and sing that to yourself and then write it all down in your little art journal everything that you did what you wore what you uh, what you made to eat um, what the table setting looked like and what the tea room was like uh, I have a separate table now in my living room that's my tea table tea room so that it's a different setting as many ladies as many meals as we attend at home there's no reason why we can't have tables everywhere and now I have little tables in every bedroom. If I want to change a scenery, I can just go sit somewhere else. And uh, so take yourself to tea. This is for ladies who are alone. Now watch a movie and keep your uh, write down something in your art journal. And if you don't have one, you can just take some paper that uh, and some color crayons and fold it and make a little book out of it and uh, write about your day. And so uh, take a little time to, to write a story. All of you have got a story in you, uh, and you know, like Miss Lily of the Valley, the one that, she, one that sends me stories, and I do have a story she sent me, I just have not had the time to come and read them to you, but uh, it's the story of Allison on the Oregon Trail, and it was supposed to start in May, because that's when generally they left from Missouri on the wagon trains, uh, and hoped to be in Oregon by September and since I live in Oregon I've learned a lot about the Oregon Trail and I've learned so much about the history of it so uh, I really appreciate those stories that she sends me and uh, so I want to tell you too about a a Christmas that we had and it, you know I don't I don't wish anybody I don't wish on anybody the kind of poverty stricken Christmases that we have had I don't even my parents on the homestead uh, had more luxurious Christmases than I did when my children were growing up. But we, we did we did increase and got a little bit better over the years. But one of these Christmases was so uh, without that I didn't have anything, any decorations. So what I did is I took paper and I thought, and I challenged the children, okay, here's some paper, scissors, tape, and it was just white paper. I said, let's see what you can make out of white paper for decorations and we made uh, folded fans and we, we stapled them and tied them with ribbon we made um, then you know you could take doilies these little doilies and fold them in half and and put them all over and they had uh, they were like a, a fan and also just like this they're just like a big snowball but another thing that we did was we would take paper and we would just wrinkle it up and there was your snowball and you could stick it in to different places of the tree and you could also dip it in glue and let uh, Elmer's white school glue and let it dry so it had a bit of a bit of a sheen on it uh, and stick that in when it dried in the trees and we also did the gingerbread women and gingerbread men in the like you fold your paper and you would cut the shape of it and it would be a garland and you put that all around your tree and then you could use deckle edge scissors and make lots and lots of strips of white paper and put those around and and on everything too and so we had a white paper Christmas and it was it was okay and I even uh, cut out little skates and little children's hats and things anything that you could cut out of paper and did a white tree I I might do that sometime for you here I did have the snowballs in a one one year and of course the haters came along and just mocked it to to death <laughs> and uh, but I, I still cling to the fact that that is a little little children they they like to do this so they could make those and make lots of Christmas uh, snowballs 
Now, uh, so now I have a list for you, and I'm going to I'm going to uh, list this for you, so that uh, in, you can go to my blog. I'm go providing a link. You can go there and see what else was added to the post because these videos are only I'm making them for my site to embellish my site and I'll be showing you uh, my outfit and I'll be showing you some of the decor and uh, I also would like to take you on a house tour and I'm trying to figure out how to do that with uh, pictures so I'll get photographs and try to put them in a kind of a slideshow like Princess Home does only mine will be uh, slightly imperfect and so ladies I hope you have a wonderful time with some of these suggestions and uh, so I wanted to uh, talk to some of the rest of you who aren't alone and whose life is bustling about them and, and you don't have a qualm. I forgot to bring in my, um, my poetry book and I wanted to bring it in but I don't want to leave and go get it. So I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about etiquette because I did have a column once online about etiquette and it Etiquette was not some strict thing about where the knives were and where the forks were and, and how uh, you know everything was to be so perfect, but it was about how making other people uh, more comfortable and being kind and polite to other people it was about courtesy. And the Bible does talk about courteous, courtesy. It says, be courteous one to another. So one of the things that's been forgotten, because in the uh, 80s there were etiquette books that were out, well, we haven't seen... Uh, quite so many out today. People had to, every generation, people don't say, oh, people were more polite in Victorian times. There was an element of society that was more polite and it kind of uh, dominated, but there were the other ne'er do wells around and there always have been, but every generation has to learn uh, courtesy and character. Every generation. And one of the best. Uh, uh, scriptures for characters add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control and so on because it, it, it mentions all these little things about character and uh, you know um, Galatians where it says uh, uh, Philippians 4 8 where it talks about think on things that are lovely pure and just and noble you learn about what what does noble mean it's a it's it's like an adjective or a verb it's not like nobility in uh, you know, in the royal line. But uh, these things have to be learned by every generation. You cannot say, oh, they were so much more polite back in the 1950s. What you have to say is, how can we make our generation more polite? Because that's what you're here for. You have to, everybody has to learn character. You don't absorb character or inherit it at birth. You have to, it has to be learned and taught. And so you can develop it and you can find uh, instances of character in, in many different stories and avenues, but I'll just relate some of the things to you. One of the things, uh, since we're in captivity now, we're probably not going to need some of it, but you've got to keep it on the forefront of your mind because there will be people in your life and you have to be kind and loving to them. And so the first thing, that's why I say get dressed and make your appearance because your appearance shows respect. And you know when the delivery people come to the door and they just they kind of leave a package and turn around and run they catch a glimpse of me but I look like I'm respectful and it's respectful to them because of their work that I want to dress up and I want you to feel that way too even if no one comes but you know you're going to be getting some of you will be getting on um, zoom or skype and talking you really need to uh, be aware of how you affect people and you don't want to depress them but one of the things we're going to have to learn that I noticed uh, it started to kind of diminish back, uh, uh, you know, maybe 10 years ago, I noticed. Uh, and out west, of course, I'm out west and I came here from Texas. But out west, uh, they tend to be more casual and extremely blunt. So blunt that uh, you, could, you could go home crying a lot, <laughs> the way people are, even, that, even in businesses, they're quite blunt. Um, is uh, you have someone over and they are there maybe to, like, uh, a lady would come over and she would give a demonstration of something, uh, maybe for the church ladies, of how to do something. Or maybe she was uh, a lady who wanted to teach girls skin care or hair care or uh, how to dress 
or anything like that. So we'd have a little program and they'd come over and they would do their thing. But there would be people who would say, I don't think it matters or I don't think this or I don't think that. And they would contradict everything that the teacher was saying. And so if you've got someone in your home and uh, you've all agreed or anywhere that you attend and you've all agreed to attend, uh, if that person is portraying some kind of refinement or maybe it's just a, you had a lady there was teaching um, people how to apply uh, makeup or a skin condition or how to take care of their hands or do their own nails. Don't sit there. Uh, it's very rude to sit there and say, oh, that's silly because it is very offensive to the person. It's throwing cold water on a person who's trying to do something to make life better for people. And I have seen this happen in all oh, little things that we have done uh, and I've watched uh, other people with their attitudes. It's because it starts in childhood and they're not told. They're not told. They're not, they don't learn that this, and of course if they go to a public school where everybody's just blurting out anything they want and they don't have any kind of finesse, they, they see other people acting that way too and it feels normal to them. But when you're in a social situation where someone has come and, or maybe been asked to come, and I'm speaking of it from a, a church view because I'm a preacher's wife of almost 50 years and I have seen everything. I have seen people ruin uh, a whole situation where it was supposed to be a really nice tea that someone was putting on and someone was invited to talk about organizational skills or just just to be helped to make life better. Uh, and I have seen people just uh, contradict and talk back and take over and they don't understand that that is very rude. So when someone is coming or someone has a very refined life, that you've gone to their house and they have a very refined life and they're serving you tea in teacups, you don't make fun of it and you don't contradict it. You just observe. You just observe and you keep your opinion to yourself if it is contradictory to what they're trying to say. And uh, now that doesn't apply to everything, but in general it applies. Uh, you also have to realize there are some people that are very opinionated and they will say something that's completely against your values. But you have to discern, you kind of have to detect whether or not they're receptive to the truth. So um, you could ask them, you know, would you be receptive to a different uh, opinion that, that's the opposite of that? Would, would you be receptive to that? And you kind of have to watch their eyes and kind of have to check out their uh, demeanor to see if they would be before you start because you could start an argument that's totally unnecessary and spreads gloom around. So, and it also doesn't do anything good for your cause, doesn't help your cause if it's shrouded in um, hostility. So you have to be very careful not to voice an opinion that is, even if it is right, you also have to be careful the atmosphere that you're in and whether it's going to be received. You have to be very careful about that as ladies. So. I will write down everything that I have suggested that you can do. And, and another thing that I have done is I am, uh, you can also write a newsletter. I've, I've made my newsletter into a little booklet form. And this one was called Minding the Mance. And I had written all the things that I had thought uh, that might be helpful uh, about the special challenges of life in and, and minding the manse and the special challenges of living in the manse, which is the preacher's home. And uh, so I had uh, written little articles, drawn a picture of the house and, and written things about how I had come here and I didn't really want to live in the manse at all. I wanted my own home. Uh, the circumstances didn't allow it at the time because of the uh, real estate values in the area and having to be so close to the church building and so I decided what I would do was I would make it my own and I would make it lovely so that when the church members came over they could see what I had done with it and the preachers that that were before that came before us didn't want to live in it so they and of course they could they could get their own home so they want didn't want to live in it and um, it had been rented out so when I came I decided that I would uh, just make it my own and just make the best of it and try to make it home. So what I did was I arranged it and used the things that I brought 
that were just like my other home that I lived in previously and I arranged it all facing the same way and everything so it would feel like the home we had just come from. So everything was the same. We were just in a different location. And uh, over the years when, uh, when our parents and grandparents passed away, I got their furniture and I started, I realized that the old furniture like this stuff here and uh, grandma's, all the end tables and beds and the stuff you see around here were all hers. And I realized they actually suit the manse better than the modern furniture. So I started filling it with all their stuff. And uh, so it's kind of like home to my husband as well because he, he liked all of her things. And I still have her candle holders and things like that. And, and of course, I've got my own things as well. And so that was my story of how we came into the manse and uh, my daughter and I just looked at it with, uh, and our faces fell because it was in really bad shape and it just really didn't look like a very nice place to live. And so my husband was such a hero and he said, I said, uh, let's go back. <laughs> Can you imagine after driving over all those passes and coming through Pendleton and going down that steep incline and coming into this, uh, the Willamette Valley and I walked into the house and I said, I, I don't even unload the truck. I don't want to stay. I'm going back. And he said, we can't go back, but you can do whatever you want with it. And I'll go get the paint, whatever color you choose, and I'll paint it for you. I'll do whatever you want, uh, whatever it does to make you happy. Get paint, get flooring, get a, get carpeting, get whatever you want. So I did. And uh, that kept us busy fixing it up. And it took my mind off of it all. And uh, so now I have kind of got it to where I can get some pictures of it and I'll take you on a tour when you get finished with this video maybe I will have all those up uh, you might have to check back again because I don't know how I'm going to get them up quickly so uh, start with your appearance because it will build up your courage I have heard women say over the years that they just feel kind of glum but then they uh, go fix their hair and they feel like they're in charge <laughs> And I like to put my apron on. I just feel like I mean business. And it gives me courage. So it gives you courage. And why would women who are alone feel they need courage? Because it takes courage to face the day without your loved ones. It takes. It just takes courage. And so I hope uh, that that this these days in captivity. You see, you don't even have to be in captivity to be in captivity. Because if you've lost some loved ones and you're home alone, it does take courage. And you don't want to endure it. Just endure it. Don't be happy just to endure it, but thrive. Try to thrive through it. Try to make these years more powerful than the ones before. When we have people around us and, and we feel this supportive, they feel supportive. And we don't need courage. We have their courage. They're building us up. They're holding us up. And we feel good. But when there are no people around, you're going to need to have courage and um uh, God said in one scripture, have courage and I will give you strength. So you want to look up that word courage, find out how, how to get it. You'll take, have to take a few steps. Uh, and then, uh, but I would say getting dressed is the most important thing because it gives you courage. It says to yourself, I'm going to make this day uh, worthwhile. I'm going to make it more valuable now than it was when I got up. So every step you take and these things that I have given you to do, uh, make the day have more value and uh, you will find that as time goes by that these moments alone are very precious very important and it help increase your faith your virtue and your knowledge and everybody has to learn this so before I go I want to say I love you and I want to thank you for all that you do for me especially for your prayers and your encouragement and your feedback really important you can go over to my blog and leave a comment if you like but if you don't want to mess with that you can just go to my email on the left and send me an email and say this is for uh, this is a comment that I want you to post and I'll post it for you and uh, you can and thank you all of you so you have supported me so well that I was able to do a few extra things that I didn't think I would be able to and I wanted to show you before you go excuse me I've got to get this out from under here Uh, I had seen some things that I liked in catalogs and I'd always wanted one of these and I saw it in uh, the Victorian Trading Company 
uh, and it was a blanket that was all gathered. And of course they wanted hundreds of dollars for it. So I thought, I think I could do that. And I had this extra piece of fleece. You could do it with anything though. You could do it with cotton or uh, muslin or anything. And I decided that I would, instead of gathering up all the threads and then pulling the threads up, I just pushed it through the machine very uh, rapidly. And I gathered up a piece like this and it has a big, uh, has little roses in it. It's hard to describe how I did it, but I just did a small piece. So I made myself one of those gathered blankets uh, with just a few dollars worth of fabric that I had already. And I even lined it. And so I wanted to show you that and I will take a picture of it for you for the blog. And those of you who have been following me since 2005 have already seen it because I had it on there one year. Uh, and I don't know where, where in the world to find it because there are too many thousands of posts already. So ladies, I hope you have a wonderful day and also take pictures if you can of your day. And those of you who have blogs, this would be a nice time to put these pictures on. Or, you know, you can get... Um, you can make yourself an album with your pictures on your phone and uh, keep track of some of your special days. So I hope you will do what you can to make this day meaningful and I will leave the challenge list on the blog for you to go see. So go over there and have a look at that and leave a comment if you like. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Goodbye.